in some strange twist of possibly irony. I actually counted wrong about which sets, how big the sets were supposed to be. Anyway, I did one extra one on the last one, so this one will only be 13 questions. These are questions 30 through 42. So I'm going to do number, try to get a different color for each section to remind me how many I've done. I'm going to do number 30 now. So I have negative 6, uh, negative 6 times the quantity x minus 9 is equal to 5 times the quantity negative 2x minus 6. Draw my line. Negative 6 times 1, negative 6 times negative 9. Remember, negative times negative is positive. Ne positive times negative, positive times negative. This is negative 30. Um, so I need to get my x's together. I'm going to get rid of minus 10x by adding 10x. Those cancel. Now in this case, in order to get rid of plus 54, I need to subtract 54. So I end up with 4x is equal to negative 84. Divide by 4 on both sides. And I get x is equal to negative 21. So my answer to number 30 is A. Pretty simple stuff. Just make sure you get your signs correct. Uh, 31, I think, is one of the last really gigantic ones, but I could be wrong. Negative P minus 5 is equal to 7P plus 6 plus 9 times the quantity 3 minus 3P. Three Draw your line. I don't have to do any distributive property here. You could do uh, times 1 if you want. But you could just bring down that too, whatever. Uh, 9 times 3. 9 times negative 3. Uh, uh, one of the things I've seen pop up a few times is uh, you forget to bring your p, your variable with your number. So make sure you have negative 27p there, not just negative 27. Otherwise, it gets kind of a messy very quickly. You lose stuff and you combine things you're not supposed to and that whole thing. Holding on to stuff is really the hardest part of that kind of solution work. So I'm going to do 7 minus 27 and get negative 20p. And then I'll do 6 plus 27, which should give me uh, plus positive 33. Now I'm going to put all my variables together. I'm going to add 20p to both sides. This should give me 19p minus 5 is equal to 33. To get rid of minus 5, I need to add 5. I'm going to go over here a little bit. This is a P, by the way. So I end up with 33 plus 5 giving me 38. 19 P is here. Times 19, the opposite is divide. And 38 divided by 19 is 2. So my final answer to number 31 is 2. It's a gigantic question in terms of like, uh, number 31, I'm sorry. Um, it's a gigantic question in terms of what it looks like. It's really not that difficult, and the answer is pretty small. The next question says, to which subset of the real numbers does the number 2.13 belong? Now, it ends, it terminates it at 3. So 2.13 is not going on forever. You don't see it as a uh, square root of something that doesn't work properly, and you don't see like a bunch of numbers here, not dot, dot, dot. So we're going to say that it terminates. So it's not irrational. It can't be B because you can't be rational and irrational at the same time. We, it's not, you can't count, little kids won't count it. You do, no kid who's really young goes 1, 2, 2.3 unless they were, you know, just told to do it. So this whole numbers, natural numbers thing, I tend to think of the natural numbers as what little kids count. Whole numbers add zero to it. Integers would be anything uh, positive, negative without decimals, na, na, na. Rational numbers are numbers that are uh, that terminate and can be made into a fraction. So if you're this, you're all the rest of these. But in this case, little kids won't count 2.13, so that's out. Rational numbers. It is rational. Like I said, it wasn't irrational. So in this case, number 32 is A because I eliminated everything else. If it was 4, I would have said that it was C because I little kids can count to 4. Um, it's in the group of whole numbers, which is all the counting numbers and 0. And integers, yeah, well, 4 doesn't have anything after it. It doesn't have a decimal or fraction. And then, you know, you can make 4 over 1 as your fraction if you want. 
number 33. It's another solving equations question. I'm just trying to get you really good at these, I think. Negative 2x minus 5 is equal to 9 plus 5x. Cancel or draw your line. I'm going to move this one over. So to get rid of plus 5x, I need to subtract. Add 5 to both sides because the opposite of minus 5 is add. This shows multiply, so I need to divide. X is equal to negative 2. So the answer to number 33 is D. Number 34, is it a solution? So all I'm going to do is plug in my X value here for X right here. So instead of having 9 minus 10X, I'm going to have, instead of having this, I'm going to plug in, wherever the X is, I'm going to put parentheses around it, 9 minus 10 times 2. For some reason, it switched to away from pen for a moment. So uh, 10 times 2 is, of course, 20. So I get 9 minus 20, or negative. 10 times 2 is negative 20, I should say. So now all I have to do is see what 9 minus 20 is. And if it happens to be negative 1, then I put yes. But if I do 9 minus 20, I get negative 11. Well, they're not the same. So I can say with pretty good confidence that 34 is no. It's not. If I had tried negative 2, would that have worked? Not really. But kind of goes in that order. 35, very similar problem, um, except they give you x and y here. Remember the x comes before the y. So I'm just looking for one of these that makes this solution true. So I'm going to start plugging in x values. I'm going to put parentheses here. Put it really tight around them if you can. Um, so whatever go uh, plus 3. So in my first case I'll try negative 5 here. Well if I do negative 3 times negative 5 I get positive 15 plus 3 gives me 18. This is my y value and 18 is equal to 18. That's what it's supposed to be so my answer to number 35 is A. I'm going to show you one that doesn't work just so you can see it. Um, so let me clear this out. If I did, uh, let's say I started with B for some reason. My Y value goes in here, negative 27. My X value goes right here, negative 7. Negative 3 times negative 7 is equal to positive 21 plus 3. 21 plus 3 is 24 and they are not the same thing. So it didn't make a truth statement, which means it's not a solution. That's why 35 doesn't work. Number 36 is another solving equations question, because that's kind of where we are in the whole scheme of things. I'm just trying to get you good at them so that we can move on to another uh, topic soon. But if you don't get good at these, you're kind of doomed for a while, especially. Uh, draw your line. Here's my like term, 3 minus 2. They're on the same side, so I just do what it says. 1p plus 15. Me, friend, friend to friend. To get rid of plus 15, I'm going to subtract. P is equal to negative 23. <clears throat> if you feel like it, you can divide by 1 here, but you don't need to. So the answer to number 36 is B. Uh, the next one, 37, says 3x plus 5 minus 5x equals negative 3. Draw my line. Like terms on the same side, I do 3 minus 5 because I didn't cross any lines or anything. Me, friend, friend of friend. To get rid of plus 5, I need to subtract. Bring down negative 2x. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. This shows time, so I need to divide x is equal to 4. So my answer to number 37 is b. Uh, now off to number 38, as soon as I can scroll up a little bit on the paper here. This is one of those sum difference questions, which the sum or difference, equ uh, difference equivalent. Basically, they just want you to know that if you have a common denominator and or you have a term on top, you can actually break it into two fractions. You do have to make sure that the fraction cannot be um, simplified down. So what I'm going to end up with is 10x over 7 minus 5 over 7.
Now, neither of these two reduce because 5 doesn't go into 7 and neither does 10. But you can always check to see maybe it, if it was 6 over 8, it actually would reduce. In order to do that, my suggestion, <coughs> I'm going to cough there, sorry, um, is you plug in as a fraction each one just to see because the calculator will automatically simplify it for you. See, I didn't do anything for you. 5 over 7 would work the exact same way. So your final answer is 10x over 7 minus 5 over 7. They basically just want you to know, which is B, they want you to know that you can split them up into two parts. I'm not sure why. Number 39 is another one of those, let's convert everything to decimals and compare least to greatest again. So this is smallest to largest. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is separate them into... Um, separate them into decimals, or convert them into decimals, I should say. My first one's going to end up being 2.1, uh, 3 fourths is 0 0.75, square root of 4 is 2, and 1.9 is already in order. And then I'm going to make a column. My decimal points have to be nice and aligned here. and 2 is 2.0. It doesn't say it, but anything that you don't have, anything on your calculator that doesn't pop up, you just put point zero after. Let's compare them left to right. So my smallest one, if I'm doing the least, in this column is 0 0.75, which means my first number in sequence is 0 0.75 or 3 fourths. For me, I would be done right now. Only one answer has 3 fourths that comes first, so I'd pick D, move on with my life. If I were to continue, I would look at comparing these two, because you have to go back to the left column to make a comparison again, because we've done all the zeros. But one, since they're all positive, by the way, two is smaller than nine, so 1.2 would come next. And then since it's the only other one with one, 1 1.9 would come. Then I'd compare my twos out. 2.0 is smaller than 2.1, so square root of 4 would come next, and then finally the square root of 9 over 2. So if you put them in decimal format, it makes it much easier. You'd be done a lot quicker if you just go about it that way. Number 40. Number 40 is another solving equations question. I'm going to write it over here on the right. 4 times the quantity y plus 4 equals 48. Draw your line, put your 1, do your distributive, me, friend, friend of friend, plus 16 to get rid of, I need to subtract. Divide by 4, because this shows times y is equal to 8. So the answer to number 40 is A. Uh, number 41, same type of thing, or it's very similar anyway. You end up with 42 is equal to negative 7 times negative 4 times negative 2z. Draw your line. Negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14z. Me, friend, friend to friend. This is plus 28, so I need to subtract. Uh, 42 minus 28 is equal to 14. Bring down 14z. You've got times here, so I need to divide. Z is equal to 1. So the answer to number 41 is C. One more. I think I can do it on this page. It's going to be a little bit taller than the question, but all the answer choices are there, so I've got what I need. Um, 6 times the quantity Y plus 2 plus 5 is equal to 65. Draw your line. Distribute. Bring down plus 5. Bring down 65. Your like terms are actually your integers here, or your uh, constant terms. 12 plus 5 is 17. Me, friend, friend of friend. To get rid of plus 17, I subtract. 65 minus 17 is 48. Y is equal to 8. So your answer to 42 is D. 
And that's it for this section. Uh, next video or the last video will be forthcoming so that you can check it out and uh, hopefully use it to your best and overall advantage.